Hello everyone, it's Ren here. I hope you are doing wonderfully, guys, on this Sunday. Today we're going to talk about three things that INFJs, I believe, excel at. Uh, what are these three things? I bet you are as curious to discover these things as I am. Although, if that was the case, then it would be reassuring because it would imply that I'm not aware of the things I'm going to talk about. Of course, I am. Nevertheless, before I move on to these three domains of excellence for INFJs, just remember that if you want to learn more about INFJs, if you want to go in depth, you can get my book, The Exotic Soul. Link is below, less than $10. Check the reviews. They're very good. You can also get my book uh, of fiction, The Infinite Castle, which is a very nice product. Also less than $10, supports the channel. It's a novel. Rumor has it the main character is an INFJ. So if you want to support the channel and if you're into Dostoevsky, Kafka, Murakami and all these nice writers, consider it. Less than $10. All links below as well as my Patreon page where you can support me from three euros a month. Really helps me with continuing to produce video content for you guys. So thank you so much to my supporters. Okay, so... Without further ado, number one, things that INFJs excel at. I think one that uh, is pretty clear across the board, something that I've been able to observe over the years and really can tell apart an INFJ that is a real INFJ from an INFJ that's not a real INFJ and that's giving impartial advice to somebody. Now, when I say giving impartial advice to somebody, notice that I am saying impartial, impartial from all possible viewpoints. And this might distinguish an INFJ from, on the other hand, an INFP. And this might be upsetting to INFPs, and you'll know why in a second. Or maybe toward FI users in general. Um, but also to ENFJs, they distinguish them from on the, a bunch of FI users, but also from ENFJs. Now, why am I saying this? Because often we tend to think that um, FI users put a great deal of emphasis on the individual and what they're experiencing, and that is true. On the other hand, FE leads, namely ESFJs and ENFJs, tend to put a lot of emphasis on the universal principles and values that an individual is supposed to uphold in regard to their group. If there is an emphasis on the group, it's more likely to be an FE emphasis. If there's an emphasis on the universal, well, that's the group taken in its broadest possible sense. So there's even more of an emphasis on FE. FI is the emphasis on the particular as opposed to the universal. Both have their merits. Okay, both have their merits. The problem is, when you're, someone is seeking advice, if you're putting all the emphasis on the individual, you're respecting the individual, but you might not be helping them surmount the obstacles that are required by taking into account what the universal situation demands. And sometimes that demands taking an objective view of what the individual is doing wrong. Right? Sometimes FI can sacralize the individual to such an extent that uh, there won't be enough of an emphasis on um, putting out their shortcomings in regard to some impartial standard. Problem is, problem sometimes with an ENFJ approach is that uh, the impartial universal uh, dimension or the whole social group dimension will be so prevalent that the individual and what they're feeling and what they are carrying in terms of their values, in terms of their own symbols, in terms of their own life purpose, can be sacrificed. And so there is a loss of the particular in what's valuable in life. And that also can be problematic. INFJs are, are perfect in this respect, aren't they? I'm only kidding. But they are quite good. They are excellent, in fact, I think, at kind of holding the balance, at being impartial in all ways. So being not partial to the individual and the particular, but also not being partial to the universal and the global and the social. In fact, as we know, if there must be a slight partiality between the two, it will be a partiality toward the universal and the group and the social because INFJs are, you know, F users at the end of the day. But the balancing with NI and TI is such that I have found that often they are still able to make room for the individual. So there is a true impartiality that's often embodied by very healthy INFJs, making them really good people to speak to because they're good listeners and they could give you good advice. Not just what you want to hear, but also not just something that is completely disinvested of the individual in such a way that it can come across quite cold 
and disembodied. Now, a second thing that INFJs can excel at, I have come to strongly believe, is to open up new path in thought and philosophy. Now, here I don't just mean philosophy in the sense of technical philosophy, you know, uh, philosophy as such that philosophy as practiced by professional academic philosophers. Often they speak in this rather strange, obscure jargon that can be a source of impatience for a lot of people. Um, sure, you know, like some people are into philosophy, that's great. I happen to be one of them. That is technical academic philosophy, but that's not the case for everybody. But I mean, philosophy in a broader sense, taking a philosophical attitude to life. Now, it's very natural for INFJs to have a, uh, a philosophical attitude to life, completely regardless of whether or not they happen to be well-versed in technical philosophy. Of course, there are, you know, passageways connecting technical philosophy and the philosophical attitude to life, but they need not exist. And in fact, sometimes the more technical you become, the more blind you may become to the philosophical attitude, which at the end of the day remains the most fundamental aspect to good philosophy. Uh, I think that INFJs are natural philosophical in their behavior, and I observe that in the comments to my videos all the time, and I observe that in my interactions with real-life INFJs all the time. Like I said, that's nothing to do necessarily with technical philosophy, um, which also means that if someone is, for example, uh, expressing some impatience with the technicality of this book, which can sometimes happen, it doesn't mean that they're not INFJ. What may mean that they're not INFJ is if they're, if they're not willing to go deep. But that's, there's a difference between going deep and being impatient with too much technical jargon. Okay, now hopefully there's not too much technical jargon in this wonderful little book. But, you know, nevertheless, that's an observation I wanted to make. INFJs, actually, on the other hand, is funny because they're not impatient. They're, they can be a little impatient with too much technical jargon in a way that maybe a strong TI lead might not be, depending on the situation. However, INFJs, you know, won't be... It's, it's, it's interesting how patient they will be with speculative exploration of avenues in such a way that sometimes people will think, oh, what you're exploring is kind of woo-woo, is kind of esoteric and pseudoscientific. Why are you interested in this? Why aren't you interested in the hard stuff? You know, and INFJs will say, well, you know, it's kind of tickling my eye. I just want to see where this is going. I mean, this is typical Jung. Uh, this is exactly what Jung uh, was doing in some ways. And you could oppose that to Freud and you could oppose that to a lot of other psychologists, psychoanalysts also, you know, Lacan among them. So, um, Jung was willing to go very speculative and very spiritual, opening up new avenues. Maybe it will be others who will be ironing out and uh, legislating and schematizing those fields once they've been opened up, and that's not necessarily something that INFJs will be interested in doing. Um, but opening up the avenues themselves, having the openness of mind to begin with to do that, and to have a sense of real potential in uncharted waters due to connection to the NI symbolism that connects them with a certain sense of the universal in all ages will help them. But again, never forget that this doesn't have to be some sort of superhuman skill. It can be something that they express on an everyday basis with the way they are, something that might not be noticed by other people. But if you pay attention and you have the curiosity and intellectual baggage to notice it, you'll notice that INFJs are constantly open to new paths. And finally, something that some people might consider, might well consider more pedestrian, is uh, something that I nevertheless consider very important to mention in terms of why, what INFJs excel at. And it might be surprising to some people, and you'll understand why in a, in a, in a very short second. INFJs are excellent at being loyal in friendship. So INFJs are actually very loyal in friendship, which is not the same thing, by the way, as uh, being good at keeping in touch. You know, and I'm sure it's a little bit dark, so open slightly. Uh, it's, a it's, it's, it's obviously a little bit different uh, from being good at keeping in touch, you know, because uh, you could have, you could totally imagine someone who's very good at keeping in touch until you don't exist for them anymore because they're not loyal because uh, they have other priorities. It seems that INFJs have in common with INTJs something that, you know, something that is hard to ignore, and it has to have something to do with the NI function, 
but it's very difficult to exactly understand in what way the NI function explains this loyalty and this fidelity is that if you're friends with an INFJ, if you have a good, strong relationship with an INFJ, they will not betray you. They will not forget, forget you. They will not discard you. You know, you will matter to them. And it doesn't matter if you're not in touch with them for months, six months, sometimes years, They'll still be there. They're loyal friends. INFJs are loyal friends. You can't say that of all types. And again, it's it really seems to be something they have in common with INTJs, even though INTJs are FI users. So this doesn't seem to be an FI FE issue, but more so an NI thing. Loyalty is there. INFJs excel at it. And like I said, seem to have that in common with their INTJ cousins. So these were the three things that I think INFJs excel at. So just to summarize them again very quickly. Um, opening up new paths in mind exploration and philosophy. So that was, uh, you know, that was one of them. Being impartial uh, providers of advice, you know, providing impartial advice, impartial both to the particular and to the universal, holding a balance as it were and excellent at being loyal friends. Different again from being good at keeping in touch on a regular basis, which they are usually not. Okay, let me know in the comments what you think, guys, and maybe you have your own three things that you think they excel at which are different. See you soon, and don't forget about my Patreon page. Bye-bye.